Come on, anybody be excited to be at the house on a Monday night? Let's go, first one. I know last Monday night we had service, but it feels good to be back home in the house. To be in our house. If I haven't gotten to introduce myself or if we haven't met yet, my name is Pastor Jonathan Rivera, and I have the privilege of being the campus pastor of the greatest university on the planet. Come on, is anybody happy to be at SCU this semester? If it's your first time coming on the Monday night, I just want to share with you a little bit about who we are and what we're all about. Okay, see, there's a phrase that hopefully by the end of this semester, you'll all know it by heart. It's this, here at the house, we are a that loves. Here at the house, we are a family that loves Jesus. Here at the house, we are a family that loves Jesus. That's what we're all about and uh, so glad that you're here. Real quick, make some noise if it is your first time on a Monday night in the house in Bush Chapel. Make some noise for me. Let's go. It's going to be an incredible semester. Really quick, a few quick things and we'll jump straight into the message. First of all, tonight we've got cross country, volleyball, and some of our football team in the building tonight. Girls volleyball had a tournament this week where they absolutely crushed Shout out to you ladies. You didn't know every Monday night we start at 7, but at 6.15 we have pre-service prayer. So make, uh, feel free to come on Monday night, 6.15, come to pre-service prayer. And also tomorrow we start our very first Tuesday morning prayer chapel, everybody. So you say, man, I want to grow my prayer life. I haven't prayed in a long time. I don't know how to pray. Wherever you are in that spectrum, Man, come Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. We've got coffee for you, everybody. Free coffee for everyone who pulls up. So if you're a little groggy coming in, that's okay. Grab your coffee, get into prayer chapel for a couple minutes, and then head on over to class. I'm excited because tonight, someone say tonight, we start our first series of the year, which is actually our word of the year, which is game-changing moments. Game-changing moments. Repeat after me, game, changing, moments. One more time, game, changing, moments. Here's what I want you to do tonight. Got three simple rules for you as we get ready to jump into the Word of God tonight. Rule number one, take some notes, write some stuff down. Because you can't remember what God told you if you don't remember what God told you. You're going to want to go back and remember well, God spoke to you tonight. Number two, here at the house, we are not quiet Christians. We say things like, amen. amen. Come on. Preach, preacher. We get involved in the message. It's not just a monologue. It's a dialogue. Number one, take down some notes. Number two, stay engaged in the message. And last but not least, number three, open up your heart because I truly believe that tonight, someone say tonight. God wants to speak to you. Is there anybody that believes that in the room tonight? Before you grab your Bible, do me a favor. Look at the person next to you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I prayed all day that God would allow me to sit next to you. Now I want you to look at your other neighbor, the neighbor that you ignored. Say, neighbor, you look good today. Come on, come on. If you got a Bible, do me a favor. Turn to the book of Exodus. Exodus, 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 chapter 3. Exodus, chapter 3. Exodus, chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. We are reading the story of a man named Moses. Somebody say Moses. Moses. Make some noise for me if you grew up watching the Prince of Egypt. Yeah. One of the greatest movie soundtracks ever. Yeah. Like ever. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. We're reading in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
It says, now Moses, somebody say Moses, Moses. was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over there and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. Because how many of you know that God speaks? And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father." God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. I just want to remind somebody tonight that God is concerned with your suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me as I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. Somebody say go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. If you're taking notes tonight, I want to speak to you from this thought, meeting the maker. Meeting the maker. Meeting the maker. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes all over this room tonight? As we pray over the preaching of God's word. Lord, we love you. Your presence is here. Lord, as we go into your word, I pray that you would speak to us in the way that only you can. Would you make words jump off pages, God? And would you make the message feel like we're the only person in the room tonight? Would you speak directly? Because you know how to do that. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open to receive whatever it is that you want to do, God. We're ready. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Come on, if you're ready for the word of God, can you make God, can you make a little bit of noise tonight? Give God a round of applause. Thank you, worship team. I appreciate y'all. So, uh, a very special person is in the room tonight, y'all. Some of y'all already know what I'm going to say. Now, first of all, can we like, can we just talk about how weird it is when Peach... When preachers are like, my smoking hot wife in the front row. My God. I'm not going to do that. But Sweet Caroline is in the building, y'all. It's in the building. Baby, I love you. Uh, so my fiance, my fiance, she a little, she a little Picasso, y'all. She a little artist, okay? And uh, Caroline loves to paint. Any artists in the building? Any art majors in the building? Okay, okay, okay. So me and Caroline, we love art, and she loves painting. I like stick figures. And, um, but Caroline loves art, and one of the things that we love to do together, we haven't gone enough as much as we'd like to, but we love going to art museums, and we love seeing pieces of art. And uh, one exciting thing is, in March, we are getting married. Which is awesome. And so we're getting married, and uh, after we got engaged, we were just like stressed out. Like, we're like, we know too many people, and our families are too big, and like, we can't do a wedding here. We ain't gonna be able to afford it. Like, so what do we do? And I was like, man, I don't know. I just, this is stressing me out. She's like, let's just leave, babe. Let's just go somewhere. I'm like, you down to like elope? She said, let's just leave. And so I was like, where are you trying to go? She's like, I don't know, somewhere cool. Like, let's go to Italy. I said, girl, I'll marry you in Italy, shoot. <laughs> and so, and by the way, let me just say, the reason we're going to Italy ain't because we bougie. We're just trying to get it run away from people. <laughs> That's just the truth. And uh, we're super excited about it, and we're, like, planning stuff out, and we're figuring out what we're going to do. 
And uh, there's two things that we want to see. Number one, in Rome, is something called the Sistine Chapel. Okay? Sistine Chapel. It's in Rome. It's beautiful. Um, but not only is there the Sistine Chapel in Rome, but then in Florence, there's this thing called the Statue of David. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's a statue that was created by an artist named Michelangelo. He's one of the greatest artists of all time. Do we have a Michelangelo in the room? Shout out to Michelangelo, everybody. <laughs> and I remember me and Caroline were talking one night, and she said, Babe, could you imagine if we could get into a time machine and go back in time and meet Michelangelo? Could you imagine what it would look like to talk to him and have a conversation with him and ask him what inspired him and, and how he knew how to do certain things and how he made his sculptures and his paintings and how he learned and what were the things that made him do the things that he did? Imagine being able to meet the maker. Imagine being able to meet the maker. This is why I personally love Apple products. Love Apple Parks, and I love my iPhone and my iPad and my MacBook. If you, by the way, I just want y'all to know, if you have a Samsung, I'm not that guy that's going to judge you for it. Go ahead and rock your Samsung. <laughs> rock it. We still love you. We still love you. There's a space for you at the table. <laughs> but what I love about Apple, though, is this. If something is broken, if something is confusing, if something is missing, or if something needs an answer, I can go straight to the maker. Anybody ever go to the Apple store just because you can? Like, you know you ain't going to buy nothing. But you're just going around looking stuff. Like, any, is, is there any relentless window shoppers in the building tonight? My people. My people. My people. What I love about Apple is that if something is broken, if something is confusing, if something is missing, or if something needs an answer, I can go straight to the maker. But tonight, I have a question for you. Where do you go when your life is broken? Where do you go when life gets confusing? Where do you go when it feels like something is missing? Man, I had somebody come up to me during a prayer night last week, and they just confessed something to me like, Pastor, like, I love what I do, and, and I love God's house, and I love worshiping, but sometimes as I'm worshiping, I still feel like something is missing. What do you do when it feels like something is broken or confusing or missing? Where do you go when you need answers? See, I think we live in a time and in a culture where we're answering all these questions in the wrong ways. That when we're broken and confused and lost, we go to all the wrong places to deal with our deepest issues. And it feels like sometimes we are wandering. Somebody say wandering. wandering. This brings us to our story. And I want to talk about four aspects of this story. The wandering, the encounter, the introduction, and the design. The wandering, the encounter, the introduction, and the design. Let's start with the wandering. We come to find a man named Moses. Somebody say Moses. Moses. And Moses is lost. Real quick moment of transparency. Lift up your hand if you have ever felt emotionally, mentally, or spiritually lost. Go ahead and put your hands down for me. Thank you for your vulnerability. See, Moses is lost, and Moses has made some mistakes that he can't change. See, it's real hard to build up a reputation, and it's really easy to lose one. He's done things that he wishes he could take back, and he doesn't know where to go from here. Moses is lost. Somebody say lost. lost. And Moses didn't do small things like, he didn't skip third period like he killed somebody. <laughs> you haven't killed nobody that we know of. <laughs> Bible says, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, Now Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest 
of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. See, Moses at one point in his life was living in the palace, and he was a prince, the prince of Egypt. But now he is in the wilderness wandering. Somebody say wandering. wandering. Have you ever felt like you were wandering through your life? Any seniors here change their major 16,000 times because you don't know where you are going. Like so many people, they come to college and they say, I'm here, but I don't really know where I'm. I have a major, but I don't know where I'm going. First of all, I want you to know there is no better place than here to do that. Like some of you are 20 years old and you feel like you're supposed to be so much farther along. I just want to encourage you, it's okay to be 20 and not know what you're doing. That's not even part of the preaching. That's just like a loving, pastoral, big brother piece of advice. It's okay. But sometimes we feel like we are wandering. Somebody say wandering. wandering. No direction. No purpose. No identity. If that is you right now or has ever been that in your life, guess what? Hello, Moses. Real quick, look at your neighbor and say, hello, Moses. But as Moses is wandering and in the midst of Moses' lostness, something happens and there is a encounter. Someone say encounter. encounter. Exodus chapter 3 verse 2. It says, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire from within the bush. And Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over there and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. I was going to try to impersonate it, but I don't even know what God's voice would sound like. Moses. <laughs> and Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. God, let me stop. <laughs> See, Moses in this moment finds something that he wasn't expecting. I want you to know today that some of you need to take God out of a box. Because we want God to work in a certain way and talk in a certain way and at a certain place and at a certain time. But God speaks in unusual and mysterious ways like a burning bush that does not burn. Moses has an encounter that he wasn't expecting and in a way that he wasn't expecting. See, because Moses is an Egyptian. Some will say Egyptian. See, his whole life, he's heard about other gods. He's heard about the moon god. He's heard about the fertility god. He's heard about the war god. He's heard about all these other gods, but this god was different. How many of y'all know there's nobody like our Jesus? This god is different because this God wanted to speak to Moses and wanted to show himself to Moses and wanted to have a relationship with Moses. And that, my friends, is the God of the Bible, a God that wants to speak to you and wants to show himself to you and wants to have a relationship with you. And here's the thing about God. He didn't just speak to Moses, and this is where I'm really excited to share this with you. It wasn't just an encounter. It was an introduction. The Bible says, verse 6, then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. See, some of you have heard about God, but you don't actually know God. You grew up in a house. I'm either going to say something super relatable or date myself right now. Did anybody in this room grow up watching Veggie Tales? <laughs> Do y'all remember the songs? Yeah. Sing it. We are the pirates who don't do anything. We just stay home and lie around. And if you ask us to do anything, we'll just tell you. We don't do anything, and I love, stop, stop, stop. All the people who didn't grow up in church are like, what are they doing right now? 
It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Real quick, do me a favor, raise your hands if you were ever in a Christmas or Easter play. Put your hand up for me. Put your hands down. Some people are like, y'all did plays? Here is the thing, is that you could grow up your entire life doing Christian activities and being around Christian people and having proximity to Christian spaces and not actually be Christian and not actually be formed into the image of Christ. There comes a moment in your life that you have to know God for yourself. That you can't depend on your mama's faith. On your grandpa's faith. On your youth pastor's faith. On your big sister's faith. Where your faith has to become your own. And see, here's what I'm believing, that in this semester, some people are going to begin to have introductions. Because all this time, you thought that you knew Jesus, and you just knew religion. You just knew Christian activity. But I believe that God is going to create burning bushes all throughout this year. It's going to happen in worship sessions. It's going to happen at pre-service prayer. It's going to happen in conversations. It's going to happen here at the altar. It's going to happen while you're doing your life journal. It's going to happen all throughout this year. God is going to create burning bushes. I believe that for many of you, this season will be an introduction or for some people, a reintroduction. I remember I was sharing during FallCon that I had a friend of mine, one of my best friends, we had a little bit of a, of, of a breakup, of a split, and there came a moment where we were beginning to reconcile, and he said, hey, I think we just need a fresh start. And I said, okay, let's do it. And he said, hi, it's nice to meet you. Some of you need a reintroduction. Because when you actually know God for yourself, it changes everything. I'm going to ask the keys to come on up as I start getting ready to land this plane. Story of a well-known pastor. He had a son that he loved a ton, and his son grew up in church and grew up going to services and hearing messages and seeing altar calls and see God do miracles. And, but once he got to college, he came to his dad one time, and he said, Dad, I, I think I have a problem. And his dad said, well, son, what's the problem? And he says, I don't know if I can keep on believing in God. And I am struggling with my faith. And the dad didn't preach at him. He didn't even pray for him. He just asked him a question. He said, well, son, you know that I love you, and you know that I'm here for you, and I'm willing to walk with you through this season, but I just I have a question for you. What, what are you going to do? Son says, yeah, I been having these struggles and I'm having this wrestling match with my faith but there's only one problem there's one reason why I can't turn my back on him there's one reason why I can't fully take that step and dad said well what is it he said the only problem is this I met him I met him see there's so many people in this room that could look back to this flag in the sand moment where something happened that you could look back and say, you know what, I can't explain this and I can't explain that and I don't know all the Bible verses and I can't rationalize all the situations and trials that I've been through, but I cannot deny what I have experienced. I know for me, 15 years ago, Jesus changed my life at this altar right there. And every 
time that I walk into Bush Chapel, I remember the encounter. I remember the introduction. I remember the moment that I had where I could say, just like that pastor's son said, I can't leave him because I met him. I had a burning bush. See, I believe that this season for many of you is going to become an opportunity and an introduction to actually, really, truly, finally meet the maker. The one that you could take your brokenness to and take your confusion to and take your questions to and take your past to and take your emptiness to and bring it to the only person who actually knows why and how he made you. The last thing I want to talk about is the design. Someone say design. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. See, Moses has this encounter. Someone say encounter. He meets God for himself. But not only does he meet the maker, but he realizes what he was made for. See, this whole time, he was running away from Egypt and running away from his problems, and he thought that he was just a shepherd. See, shepherds were the lowest of the low in this society. And some of you are in this room, and here's what you do. You underestimate what God wants to do in you, and through you say, I'm just a shepherd. I'm just a shepherd not anybody special. I don't come from a specific family. I don't come from this. I don't come from money. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not as pretty as them. I'm not as smart as them. I'm not as influential as them. I'm not as talented as them. I'm just a shepherd. Somebody say shepherd. I'm just a shepherd. But see, in this moment, God tells Moses, you are more than just a shepherd. He says, go to Pharaoh for I am sending you to deliver my people. You are not just a shepherd, you are a deliverer. God says, I didn't make you to just be a shepherd, I made you for me. If you're taking notes tonight, I want you to write this down. You were made for God. You were made for God. You were made for God. You were made for him to know him, to love him, and to serve him. And here's the thing, some of you have been trying to figure out who you are and what you are and what you're supposed to do, but you will never find who you are until you find who God is. I ask you to stand up on your feet tonight. I ask the worship team to come and join me. I'm believing for all throughout this semester that every classroom and every dorm room and every chapel service and every pre-service prayer and every house group they will become a burning bush that it will become an opportunity for you to find and encounter and know God in a completely new way like you never have before so here's what we're going to do tonight we're going to worship, and I believe that as we worship and as we sing, just like earlier before, the presence of God is going to come into this room. And if you're in this room tonight and you say, I need an introduction, or maybe I need a reintroduction. I want to know God for myself, or I want to know God in a new way. Here's what I'm going to invite you to do. As we begin to worship and as we begin to sing, this altar is going to be open for you. And I just want you to come and worship with everything that you have and everything that you are. And ask God that this semester will become a burning bush in your life. Can you lift up your hands tonight? I want to pray for you. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for every person in this room. We thank you for what you're doing in this new season. 
God, I pray for burning bushes. I pray for encounters. I pray for introductions. I pray for a fresh wind to come through this university and through this semester and through this chapel tonight that as we worship and as we sing and as we lift up your name, God, that you would begin to do something new in our hearts and in our minds, God, that the presence of God will begin to stir something up within the souls of every student at SAU this semester, God. We need something new. We need something fresh. We need your oil. We need your presence. We need your Holy Spirit. I don't want to leave this place the same way that I came in. I don't want to leave this place the same person that I came in. God, I pray that you would do something new in this season. We ask for it and we believe for it in the powerful name of Jesus. Come on.